Reporting started. Hey, everybody. This is John Huffmaker, also known as The Huff, on the CCIE Collaboration Forums. I decided today to uh, start a video series on how to build your CCIE Collaboration Home Lab. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, if, if you're going back to CSET, CCNA, CCNP, you know, CCNP Voice, CCIE Collaboration, Nowhere do they ever show you how to actually set up your servers. So I decided to start a video series where I will go through the process of building your first physical server all the way up to having your call managers all online. And um, I will help you also get your Active Directory domain control along with DNS all set up so that you guys have a fully functional lab. If you go to images.google.com and do a search for CCIE collaboration, you should be able to find the Cisco 360 topology for the CCIE Collaboration Lab. Um, what you'll have is a headquarters, a branch one, branch two, and a backbone. Now, I am not gonna go over how to actually set up your network hardware. That you should all be well familiar with if you are at this point. However, of course, if you're needing some trouble or if you're needing some help, you can always go on the forums. I'm sure somebody will be able to help you from there. So this video series will just cover setting up the actual servers. Um, now, for this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing ESX. Now, because it's difficult to take a video of me doing that on a physical server, in this case, I will be putting it into a virtual machine so you can see the install process. Um, however, you will be installing your, your copy of ESX onto a physical server, and you will need plenty of memory for whatever server you use. You can get away with two servers with a little less memory, but um, Memory is going to be the critical thing for you. Uh, each of the call managers all require about four to six gigs, depending on if it's call manager, Unity, Presence, UCCX. Um, as far as processor level go, you're going to want a minimum of the Xeon processors with a quad core. And I highly recommend getting processors that have 12 megs of cache. I had a lot of issues in my home lab when I was running Xeon processors with four megs of cache. The, um, the, the Tomcat service would just never launch. And uh, the only way I was able to resolve it was putting in 12 meg cache processors. You can buy servers that have that for next to nothing these days. So it really shouldn't be a problem. And you know, if, if you're working on building a lab, your server shouldn't cost you too much compared to some of the other hardware that you're gonna need. Uh, anyways, let's get started with the build for ESX. I'm gonna go ahead and share my desktop. That should be visible to you now. Um, so again, I'm going to do this in a virtual machine, but normally you would be putting this on a physical server. Now, all you have to do is go to VMware.com, go to uh, the vSphere section, and download ESX. It is for free. Um, the free server has a couple limitations. Uh, you will not be able to build a highly available cluster. You can't actually use the vCenter server at all and uh, you can only do 32 gigs of RAM and two physical processors. Doesn't matter how many cores are in your processors, just two physical processors. Um, you have to sign up on the website, but when you do that, you will get a free license and you'll be able to keep your server running endlessly. If you do not license your server, it will only be good for 60 days. But as I said, the license is free, so you may as well just sign up on VMware.com, get your free license. Now, uh, today is November 15th, 2014, and I am installing on the current, you know, actual release of ESX. I know that ESX 6 is coming in the not too distant future. Um, I don't know if it will be supported for Call Manager. Uh, I know that it is going to a mostly web-based um, hypervisor as opposed to today. You kind of do everything through the vSphere client. Uh, anyways, this is ESX 5.5, and uh, let's get started. So normally you would burn your ISO to a disk and turn on your server. So this would be that point. You'll notice it'll come up with this little blue screen. You go ahead and hit enter and it will start booting. Feel free to skip through the video for these parts that uh, have a little bit of lag. Although interestingly enough, ESX is very quick and painless to install and it actually only takes a few minutes, um, even from start to finish. Uh, one of the things I would highly recommend for your servers, go ahead and get a USB memory stick and uh, get it at least eight gigs in size. Use that to boot off of and then use your actual hard drives to store all your virtual machines. Um, but 
ESX is definitely runs really well off of a USB stick. Once it's booted, it doesn't really go back to the USB stick at all. It's all kind of running in memory. So um, for your servers, I would highly recommend getting a USB stick. So we're just about booted here. It's not going to run extremely fast since this is on my laptop. Um, obviously, on a physical server, it would run much faster. Although, if you're booting from CD, it probably wouldn't be very fast anyways. Um, so just about done here. Probably be loaded in less than a minute, if I had to guess. Also, I want to make mention before uh, I go any further that obviously all this stuff that I'm going to show you is used at your own risk. If you decide to use this in a production environment, you will definitely be on your own as far as uh, any damage you cause. Um, I'm here to assist people for you know those who want to build your own lab. However, um, I can't be responsible for anything that you do or do not do within a production environment and also even at your own personal lab environment. Uh, another thing I want to mention is as far as getting a hold of the copies of the ISOs for Call Manager, Unity, Presence, and UCCX, um, if you work for a company that has SmartNet, um, you should be able to get a hold of the installable ISOs uh, through that mean. Um, if you do not have access to that, you will want to go ahead and pay for a not-for-resale license from Cisco. It costs about $200, and it will give you licenses that never expire. Now, if you install with media that uh, you don't have not for resale licenses or no licenses at all, everything will install, but it will all install with temporary licenses. Um, it will work just fine for your purposes, of course, because uh, you should not be building this for a production environment. But um, anyways, if you do not have access to licenses, I highly recommend getting the not for resale. As you can see, the uh, ESX has booted up. Um, at least to the install screen. So let's go ahead and walk through it. Uh, you're going to go ahead and enter at this screen. Go ahead and read through the license and then hit F11 to accept. And it's now looking for a location to install to. Uh, at this point, if you have installed your USB drive, it should be listed here. Uh, don't forget that you may have to go into the BIOS of your server to enable it. Um, to be visible. So if you do not see it here, you probably don't have your BIOS set up correctly. Also, while talking about BIOSes, when you are when you get a fresh server, um, a lot of older servers do support virtualization, but it is not turned on by default. In those cases, you will need to go into the BIOS. You'll have to go under the processor and turn on virtualization support. You will not be able to get ESX installed if it is not turned on. Anyways, on this virtual machine that I have here, uh, there's the 40 gig hard drive that I plan to install to, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. I will use US English since that's the only language I know how to speak. And at this point, I need to choose a root password. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. Uh, passwords match, hit enter. It's going to do one final scan to check over the hardware to make sure it meets all the specifications. Uh, the very next screen we should see, it will be hitting one final key to basically kick off the install, and that's it. Um, once we get there, I'll let it run through, and then I will show you how to download the vSphere client, and um, we'll go from there. Now, uh, by default, this thing comes up set up for DHCP. Um, since this is running within a virtual machine, it's going to get the NATed address, which is what I will connect to. Um, you can obviously statically assign the address no problem. In fact, I will show you how to do that through the interface. You could do it through the installer. Um, here, uh, sorry, go ahead and hit F11 to install. Um, you can do, you can change the IP address through the interface when ESX is fully booted up. You can also do it through the vCenter client. You will notice if you've never seen an ESX server before, um, the booted up screen for ESX 
it contains very little. It's a nice big yellow screen, shows your IP address. Uh, you can hit a few keys to change things like IP addresses, but that's it. Everything is done through the vCenter client. Um, so anyways, we'll let this installer run through. It'll be done in just a few minutes. Uh, to be perfectly honest, if you're doing this on a physical server, it would be taking up just about this long to do the install. So I'd, if I had to guess, it's a, it's a whole 10 minutes to get this thing installed. Okay, and that's it. ESX is installed. I'm going to go ahead and enter to reboot this thing. And you'll notice that uh, the boot phase for uh, with it already installed looks almost exactly like the boot phase with uh, when you're booting up from CD to do the install. Um, once it is booted up, it will load a um, sort of a web server into the background. The web server doesn't do a whole lot for you other than um, present you with the ability to download the vSphere client. Um, the links that will be on that are actually go out to the internet. So you will still need internet access on whatever machine. I know it sounds silly because most people have internet access on everything, but in your lab you may not. So if you are working from a workstation in your lab, you will not be able to download the vSphere client unless you have internet access. Just about ready to get going here.
Okay, ESX has booted all up, so it is fully installed now. And here is the lovely yellow screen I was talking about before. You can see all that's really visible here is the IP address. Um, you can hit F12 at this point to shut down or reboot the server, or you can hit F2 to do a very, very minor customizations. Let's go ahead and hit F2. It's going to prompt you to log in. So this will be the same password that I've set during the install phase. And here I could change my password if I wanted. But uh, most important, if you are going to now statically assign the IP address, you're going to want to configure your management network. Uh, we'll go down to IP configuration, and there it is. If I wanted to statically assign at this point, I could go ahead and fill in these three fields, and that would do it. Now, when you finish, you'll hit escape, escape, and then it will ask you, is it okay to reset the network? You do have to hit yes, otherwise um, it will not do anything. Let's go ahead and get back to the last screen. Also, you can go ahead and set up your DNS entry. So uh, at this point, you'd put domain.com, whatever you want it to be. And you can also put in your DNS servers here as well. Um, there isn't a whole lot more in this screen you could do. You could set up VLANs if you really want. Um, that may be very helpful because you're going to certainly need a few, but it depends on how many network cards you have. Um, if ESX does not want to play nicely, um, sometimes all you have to do is just restart the management network, so that is kind of a helpful option as well. Uh, anyways, that's about it, but one last thing I would like to show you guys is what happens now. What happens when you go to HTTP 133. Okay, so obviously it is an SSL encrypted page. Uh, it doesn't have an SSL certificate by default, so you're going to have to go and accept that, uh, you know, it might blow up your computer. All right, um, this is where you download the VSERA client. Again, this link is going to take you to the Internet to download it from VMware's website. It is not actually stored centrally on the server. Um, there's also a couple of things you could download here, but everything on this page is going to force you to go out to the Internet to download stuff. Uh, but this is all you need to download vSphere Client. If I click this link, you can see it is now downloading. Uh, I already have it installed, and I will end the video here because the next video I'm going to show you guys how to use OVA templates and how to actually start bringing up your call managers. Um, also, uh, I did this demo on a virtual machine, but uh, the rest of my videos will actually be using ESX booted off of a real physical server. All right, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, just uh, shout out in the forums or shoot me an email or a PM, whatever you like. Thanks a lot.